All right, guys, Silver Stacking Rockstar here with you. I've done a couple of reviews already on uh, some other canned stuff. Um, what was it? Uh, canned beef and canned pork. And it was pretty good. The canned beef was really good. The canned pork was kind of sweet. <clears throat> so I thought in this video, or this actually in a video, a live video, live stream, I'm going to try these <laughs> these tamales in a can. Somebody said they're yucky. One of my uh, one of my comments on there was they're yucky. So, you know what? I'm going to try yucky and see how yucky it is. I'm I don't think I've ever eaten these. But I'm not afraid to try it. I bought a few cans of them. I think I bought, I don't know, two or three cans. And I thought I'd give it a shot and see if it was any good. Um, I don't know. And if we have an SHTF situation and things go really bad, I'm pretty sure that a lot of this crap that we got in the can stocked up you know, if we run short on food, it's going to taste a lot better than it does now. Um, you ever go on a camping trip and you get up in the mountains and just a bologna sandwich tastes pretty darn good, you know, on a camping trip up in the mountains. Um, peanut butter and jelly. It's pretty good all the time anyway. Um, but things that you wouldn't ord ordinarily eat at home. You know, maybe quick foods, canned foods, stuff like that. They don't, they don't taste all that great at home. But when you get up in the mountains or out camping or whatever on a fishing trip, egg salad sandwich, chicken salad sandwich, tuna sandwich, all, those things are just great. Um, we used to go deep sea fishing all the time. And my mom would make a whole bread sack full of egg salad sandwiches to take on the boat. And, um. Uh, I remember taking potato cakes. I don't know if you guys have ever had a potato cake, but potato cakes are delicious. They're kind of like a, almost like taking mashed potatoes and frying them like a um, hash brown. And man, they're delicious. They're awesome. But anyway, I'm going to try some of this and see. And uh, I want to try all this stuff that I've bought and see if it's something, I mean, if it's nasty, if it's something I can't, palate <laughs> i can't stomach then yeah i'm gonna throw it out but if i can stomach it i'm gonna eat it well it's mushy it's not um uh, it's not like a a homemade tamale obviously I've had tamales that were much better. Hey, what's going on, Kentucky John? How you doing, man? Thanks for stopping by. I'm trying tamales for uh, um, a SHTF situation, you know. Can I eat them? I don't know. I think so. I think they're all right. I mean, I bought some tamales from Costco's here a couple weeks ago. And I'll tell you what, man, Costco's, actually it wasn't Costco's, it was Sam's Club. Sam's Club's got it going on, man. When it when it comes to some of that frozen food stuff, their tamales, man, they were like freaking loaded with meat. And the maza, I think it's maza you call it, the, the, the corn stuff around it, um, delicious. And these here were even wrapped in paper, you know, to give it that true, authentic tamale uh, look, you know, which I don't, I don't know. I think, I don't think they needed to wrap that in paper to hold it together. I'm thinking you could cock your windows with that stuff. Stick to your ribs, probably. And everything else. Is it real meat in there? I think it is kind of a ground up. It's cheap. I'm sure whatever it is, it's a cheap meat. 
the sauce is pretty good. I'm no connoisseur. I'll tell you that right now. But I think in a SHTF situation. Okay. Y'all see Mad Max? <laughs> Anybody see Mad Max? Well, remember the guy in the gyrocopter? Mad Max. Um, he had a can of uh, dog food. And Mad Max took it away from him. And he ate he ate the dog food. And then he threw the can to his dog. And his dog licked it clean. If things got bad, really, really bad, like I bet you could go over to uh, some of these third world countries and leave dog food laying around. I bet you that dog food would be gone. I bet you somebody eat that dog food. Can of Skippy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nice alternative raviolis. You know, I think raviolis would probably be better. I think because I've eaten raviolis in a can and the pasta in the can is okay. This Maza or whatever you call this stuff on there, I think it's called Maza. Uh, it's not the greatest. It's kind of a little bit of a rubbery texture, you know, but it tastes all right. I mean, if you're thinking authentic Mexican tamale when you open a can of these, you're going to be really disappointed. But if you're thinking tamale alternative, Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got that word from you there, Kentucky John. If you're thinking tamale alternative or staying alive, you're going to be happy with this, I think. At least I am. And like I said, if you're, you know, if you're hungry, just like when you go camp and you're out in the woods, things taste better, man, when you're out there. Would I eat this at home very often? Nope, I sure wouldn't. Not if there's a Sam's Club around, I can go get real tamales at for $10 for a dozen. Um, I don't really know what their what their market is for these. I guess some people probably like them and probably would eat these more occasionally than I would. Have you ever tried these, Kentucky John? Has anybody else ever tried these? I've never tried them in a can that I remember. And I've grown, you know, I grew up kind of poor. You know, when I was a kid, I remember going and standing in commodity lines, you know, getting that commodity government cheese. But that stuff was awesome. You can't even get cheese that good anymore. But I remember getting that, powdered milk, you know, all the crap that they give you in commodities, you know. And I was a kid and stand in line getting that stuff, but I don't remember ever getting anything like this, these tamales or anything. The meat's kind of grainy. It's got a little bit of a grainy texture to it. Yeah, you haven't tried them? You're not missing a whole lot. And I don't remember how much these were, probably dollar two dollars a can, somewhere around there. Um I don't know what the protein is on them and the total fats, nine grams. Hey, what's going on there? Dove season saturated fat, three and a half grams, trans fats, none cholesterol, uh, 20 milligrams, sodium, 990 milligrams of sodium. How you doing tonight? Dove? That's, that's uh, quite a bit of, of salt. 41%. Yeah. It's got a lot of salt in it. Total carbohydrates, 22 grams. Sugars, 2 grams. Protein, 6 grams. So, I mean, you're not going to... You're not eating very healthy eating this, I can tell you that. But you will stay alive, you know. And You substitute some of this with, uh, you know... Um, yeah, it's a lot of sodium. It's got a lot of salt in it. If you got high blood pressure, you might be in trouble eating this very often. But I got some the other day and I was talking about them and somebody said they tried them before and it was yuck. And I was like, yuck. Okay, let me see what yuck is because it's got to be bad for it not to be okay for me. You know, I mean, I can eat 
I can stomach quite a bit. <laughs> you know, I've never eaten an MRE, but I work with a guy that uh, he's eaten a few of them. And we were talking about them the other day. And I can't remember specifically what we was talking about the MREs. What was he was saying that they were? Oh, he was in the military in the 80s. And he said the MREs that he was eating was dated in the 50s, like 55. That's what it was. When they got them, they looked at the package. And it said like 1955 on it. <laughs> Fancy gas station food. Yeah. Maybe a little safer than sushi, though, huh? <laughs> That's what you have to watch out for, that gas station sushi, right? No, that'll kill you. I don't know. Do you think, uh, what do you guys think? You guys think these would be good in SHTF if you were starved? Or if you was even slightly hungry? Now, I usually, I, I'm fine with one meal a day. Modern dehydrated backpacking food isn't too bad. You know what? Like Bear Creek, is that what you're talking about? Uh, I love that stuff. Uh, we used to go, I took the whole family one time and we went on a, I don't know, it was a five or six mile backpacking tra trip up in the woods. And we just, we had our, every one of us had our own packs, you know. And our own, you know, set at, for our weight limits, you know, and at our size and everything. And we camped out for a night on a military uh, base out in California. I think it was Camp Pendleton. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, Dev. Um, but we camped out there and we ate, we, we got some water. Nah, I probably had water with us. But we boiled some water and we mixed in the Bear Creek noodles and those things. It's like I say, man, when you're out camping or you're out hunting um, or you, everything's better away from your own house. Like you go to a neighbor's house and have mac and cheese and it's like the best mac and cheese you ever had in your life, you know. But yeah, these ain't terrible. I mean, but I'm not a super taster, you know, my wife, she's a super taster. She tastes anything that's really salt or really sweet or, Hey, sir, gold, what's going on, brother? Have you ever tried or made? Oh no, but I've seen, I've seen it being made on, on the internet. Uh, was that, uh, blueberries and dried dehydrated meat? Is that right? Something like that and fat. You gotta have a certain percentage of fat. Pemmican. Yeah, I know it's uh, high in protein, right? Hey, I appreciate y'all stopping by. I was doing these videos and I was like, man, then I gotta go back through the video, gotta edit the video. If there's anything, I'll say, you know what? I'm just gonna do a live. And I'm going to try some of this stuff that, you know, I don't know how many other people buy this stuff for SHTF, you know, stock it up. Um, okay. Yeah. Yes. Lard, beef and blueberries. So blueberries has what? Some kind of a natural, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a natural um, preservative. Is that what it is? In the blueberries? I thought, man, I'll just do a live stream and that gets it done. And we try it. And I have a crappy dinner. <laughs> Wife's in school tonight. So um, eat by myself. Lasts forever. I mean, it is a shame to waste a dinner on canned tamales. There's stuff in there in the kitchen I could have had that was really good. But I do this for you guys. You know what I mean? Antioxidants. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of antioxidants too. So yeah, I'm eating this crap for you guys. Cause, uh, 
yeah, it's definitely not, probably not the healthiest choice for sure. Um, canned tamales with salt, you know what I mean? Lots of salt, which I like salt, but. I'm going to polish off a whole can of these, man. Uh, I don't think so. I think it's a high protein or antioxidants. Sure, Gold says. Well, I know blueberries have antioxidants in them. And I don't know. Yeah, blueberries don't have proteins, do they? High proteins. It's the meat that provides the protein. You guys ever hear of protein poisoning? Like, I found it funny that if you raised rabbits and all you ate was rabbits, you could probably die of protein poisoning from just eating rabbits because they that's all they have is protein, no fat. I thought that was kind of odd. Protein poisoning. I guess that's like the guys uh, doing that challenge, trying to drink a whole gallon of milk or whatever, and they drown, or whatever they do. Dove season says, I usually cook at least one. I usually cook at least one stockpile dinner for the family every month. They have learned to tolerate it. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now, if my wife had DT, she'd be pissing and moaning, man. When there's other stuff in there in the kitchen, she she would not want to eat these. But I grew up eating Vienna sausages and bologna sandwiches and potted meat and all that crap. So you know what? These these are okay. Chuck and John says, "Yep, need fats." I'd be okay for a while because I'm pretty fat already. I need to lose some weight. We got to get a little soup with that. Got to get it cornered up over here. There is pissing and moaning on those nights. <laughs> yeah, maybe some pissing and moaning here too. My wife talks about prepping and I'm like, honey, when that time comes, you're not going to worry about this or that or whatever you know um there's going to be so many other things to worry about that that's not even going to be an issue you know all right so somebody left me a comment on my last one about these being yucky um I'm not going to say it's the best thing I ever ate coming out of a can, but it probably is not the worst. Um, I could I could tolerate this for quite a while. My can leaked out on my table here. I don't want to get this on my silver. That wouldn't be good. Then if I sold you guys some of my silver, it would smell like tamales. Or tamales in a can, baked tamales. <laughs> Sir Gold, if you, no, <clears throat> if need be and you need protein or starving, find a rotting tree that's fallen and damp. Peel off bark and stick your arm into it and wait till it's covered with ants and then eat them. Taste like pepper. You've actually eaten ants before? It could be a selling point. <laughs> tamale silver. Hot tamale silver. Have you eaten ants before, Sir Gold? I'm not opposed to eating ants. I've probably eaten ants, but I didn't know it. Uh, my grandmother called them piss ants. We always had piss ants in the kitchen at my grandmother's house, the little black ones. Now I'm having another favorite, chasing it with a, a swig of Dr. Pepper. Oh. 
So I'm, I got my potato seeds today, guys. And I'm going to start my garden. Um, I broke it up the other day or yesterday. Um, just kind of ripped it, cross hatched, you know, to get the grass up and everything. And I'm looking for some implements. So I'm going to start um, getting it ready to plant. Um, my wife on the way to school tonight picked me up 30 pounds of seed potatoes. She got three, three different kinds. She got red potatoes. She got Yukon golds and she got, um, what was the other ones? Ben, um, Benikin? No, it's not Benikin. Uh, Benichek's, not Benichek's. Um, crap. Benix, it's not Benix. Anyway, sounds like that. Something like that. I got three different kinds of potatoes. And uh, I planted potatoes a few times. Well, I planted them twice. The first time I planted them, um, man, they did good. Um, I probably planted 30, 40 pounds of potatoes. And I think we harvested probably... <sighs> I'm guessing, but I'm I'm going to say a thousand to fifteen hundred pounds of potatoes out of that thirty-five pounds. I planted four four rows, four or five rows, a hundred feet long, and and we made a lot of potatoes. Now a lot of them went to waste. Um, animals got them. We had them underneath the house where it was kind of cool, but the house wasn't uh, closed in, didn't have underpinning all the way around it, and chickens got in there and pecked some of them and. I don't know what all, but anyway, I, I covered them with straw and all that. And, all right, Dove, we'll see you, brother, if you haven't taken off yet. Appreciate you stopping by. Um, JB says, tamales are great, but I have noticed products changing what they are putting in the can because of ingredient shortages. Beware. Like what? What do they put in there that's uh, that they're running out of and they're substituting with something else? Sir Gold says, don't throw away big lighters. Even empty, they make great fire starters. Now, you talk about the flints? The flints in them, Sir Gold? Um, Tracy Preston says, what do you do with the empty Bic at Sir Gold? Well, I know the uh, flints are good in them, and I also know this from past experience. Um, in the prison system, a lighter can last a long, long, long time. When you think it's gone and maybe you throw one away or something, an inmate can take a lighter and they can make a fire with that thing for a long time. <clears throat> And they'll take toilet paper and roll it up real tight. And they'll light the end of that toilet paper and let it hang in their cell and let it burn real slow. They call that a wick. And they can use that to light their cigarettes off of for hours, maybe even days. Um, and I know they can do that with lighters. I know lighters uh, are pretty valuable in the prison system. They don't throw them away. <clears throat> um, I don't know how long, I guess that's a, what you're talking about, Sir Gold, as far as lighting the fire, the uh, flint that's in them, the little piece of flint, but even it goes out eventually. Um, but I've seen them like make them last even with the butane in them forever. <laughs> yeah, it's that little piece of flint in the bottom of there when you if you if you light a lighter and you hold it too long like you're trying to light something the plastic that holds that wheel will fall apart and the wheel will fly out and the spring will fly out and you'll lose the flint but if you take something and gently open up that the little piece of plastics on the side that holds the wheel and and catch that spring underneath that wheel is a piece of flint but you don't even have to take it out you can use it right there on that wheel and uh with some lint in your pocket or like I said, toilet paper frayed up, you know, and uh, you probably get that to light if you get a spark. 
but uh, if you make you a wick like that, you know, you can, you can light fires off of that for a long, long time. I've seen them burn for, I've smelled them burn for hours, not seen them, but I've smelled them burn because that's how they, they don't have a, a cigarette lighter. You know, they'll light another guy's wick and he'll have it burning in his cell for a long time. But anyway, tamales in a can, guys. Um, gourmet? No. Okay, yeah. Um, if I starve to death, like I said, if you've seen Mad Max, man, they were, they, they, he really didn't fight because there wasn't no fight to it. But um, the guy had a can of uh, Skippy dog food or some kind of dog food, might have been Alpo. And, uh, Mad Max ate the can of Alpo and gave the can to his dog and the dog cleaned it up. And then the guy in the gyrocopter got it at the end and was trying to clean up what was left in it that the dog couldn't get to. So in a SHTF, the tamales in a can are great. Um, most anything in the can, uh, food of sustenance will, you know, keep you alive. And it's going to taste a whole lot better in that situation than it would right now. So um, that's my take on it. I just wanted to do a little review on these things and and see. Now, I don't think I would go buy 10 cases of these. But a case of them in there, you know. I think it's prudent. You know, it's something different. If you were eating pork and rice and and beef and rice every night the can of tamales would be a good switch out which hopefully you got other things to go with it some potatoes you know uh other vegetables corn carrots whatever um yeah yeah tracy uh correct when you're hungry you'll eat and I, you know and I, and I hear everybody say stock what you'll eat you know what i mean and, and I understand that because if you've got it, you're buying it, you're stocking it up. If you don't ever eat it, uh, it's going to, it could go bad, I guess, but cans last forever. And then if you decide you didn't want it later, or we averted the SHTF, you could always donate it because there's people out there that don't eat every day. Um, but, you know, uh, I don't, how can you stock what you eat? right now i mean some of it you can but most of us don't eat canned foods every day you know or uh even a lot of canned food mostly vegetables all we ever eat in a can <clears throat> you know canned green beans um canned corn occasionally not very often um i love canned asparagus i can eat a whole can of asparagus by myself canned spinach those glory uh cans of um greens oh my goodness i i didn't think those would be all that great but i can tell you right now uh they're they're called i think it's glory at walmart they're a little bit oversized they're quite a bit bigger than these cans um and i think it's greens it's not i don't think it's spinach it's just greens and they've got uh, seasoning in there already oh my goodness they are delicious and maybe I was really hungry that night when I came home and my daughter had some made and she said, Hey, this is some of those seasoned greens. I don't know if you've tried these or not. And she made me a plate and I was like, wow, we got some of those in here, but we've never eaten them. I've never tried them. Uh, well, we'll be eating them now because they are delicious. I really, really liked them. So anyway, you know, it's the canned meats that we got to try and see if it's something we can live with, you know, um collard greens is that what it was the glory brand collard greens season oh yes they are great i loved them i don't know if i could eat a whole can of those because they're kind of big but uh i bet i could put a whipping on it uh, almost eat them all but um i can eat a whole can of spinach you know um and the asparagus no problem but um it's the canned meats you know and it's the different canned meats like we eat tuna pretty often in a can, um, chicken in a can, but I've never done anything really with a pork or the beef in a can. So those were the ones that were kind of new to me 
and and I wanted to try and see, okay, are these are these going to be something that we could eat and enjoy, or is this going to be crap? You know that I'm like sick and wishing I hadn't, wishing I'd stocked up something else. Maybe I don't know. But anywho, I say thumbs up on this stuff. The the Hormel tamales, they they are an authentic Mexican tamales, but they're a pretty good replica, and they don't taste too bad. Um, SHTF, they're they're tolerable, uh, and it would be something different from the canned beef and the canned pork, and and maybe even the tuna and the chicken, you know. So anyway. Um, if you guys think so, you know, let me know what you guys think, what you guys stock as far as meats or whatever, you know, um, in the can or um, whatever. Anything you guys stock up on like that, just give me a holler and let me know because, you know, I need some other ideas of what I could uh, put in the pantry, you know, for long-term food storage. You know, we got beans and rice, um, some pastas. Um mostly spaghetti and macaroni noodles probably um but any ideas on anything else starting a garden so we're going to have some potatoes she bought um a half a pound i think of corn candy corn seed and also white cream sugar cream or something like that corn seed and then she uh, she got some spineless okra seed. So as of right now, we're going to have the three different Benecheks. Benecheks? No, that's not the name of those potatoes. So we're going to have three different types of potatoes. And we're going to have the okra and the uh, corn. Tracy says canned salmon. Good on a cracker or patties. Okay, the only salmon I've ever tried was smoked salmon, and I didn't care for it a whole lot, but my mother-in-law said it was because it wasn't fresh. She said fresh smoked salmon is delicious. So canned salmon, I'll try some of that. I'll get a can of that next time at the store, and uh, I'm going to do a review on it, Tracy. So uh, you like it? You said good on a cracker or patties? What, do you, what kind of patties are you talking about? because <clears throat> I want to give it an honest review. Um, and, and, you know, just like I said, it has to be, for me, it has to be bad to not be okay. I can, I can pretty much, <laughs> I don't want to make it sound like that. You said she loves it. Oh, he loves it. Tracy. I don't know if he or she, anyway, you love it. So I'll try it. And, uh, I'll do a little review on it just like I did these and we'll see what we can do with it. What kind of patties? So I want to make sure and maybe what kind of crackers are you talking saltines? Are you talking Ritz or um, some of the better crackers or just, you know, I'm kind of a regular like saltine kind of guy, you know, uh, mix the salmon with egg and breadcrumbs. Oh, I know. Yes. Like a tuna patty. Exactly like a tuna patty, probably, but maybe flaxseed. I love it with flaxseed in it. My wife used to make those. Um, delicious. Mix the salmon with egg and breadcrumbs and fry. See, I don't know how she made the uh, tuna patties, but I love those things. So I imagine the salmon would be about the same. So what kind of crackers are uh, would, do you do you eat it on, Tracy? the uh, canned salmon. I'll try that though. Absolutely. And I'll see if she'll make some uh, patties with it. Yep. Tuna patty. Hmm. Never thought about it with uh, salmon. For sure though. We'll give that a shot. Um, any particular brand? Saltine or Ritz. Okay. I'm good with either one of those. I think we got Ritz. Any particular brand on the salmon? Is is there any that you know of that's better than others? Are they both okay? All of them okay? I don't know. I've seen it in there the other night, salmon. I looked at it and I was like, eh, wasn't really sure on the salmon. Fish in a can. Now, I used to eat sardines when I was younger. And 
Uh, I can't really do sardines now. <laughs> Something to do with the bones that's in them. And uh, kind of, I mean, if I was hungry, SHTF, I'd probably eat it. But I'm I'm not I'm not going out and buying a whole bunch of sardines right now. Um, oysters, I love oysters, smoked oysters, uh, in cottonseed oil though. I don't I don't like them in the what are they in water? Um, I like them in the cottonseed oil. I grew up eating them with the cottonseed oil, and that's kind of the flavor I'm used to with saltine crackers. And to me, they're delicious, but I can almost not eat a whole can of them. Like. I can probably eat three quarters of a can. I got a fly buzzing around here. Isn't it crazy? Winter time and you got flies out still and it's freezing outside. There is salmon that you have to take the bones and skin off traditional way. They do have boneless salmon in a can. That's probably what I'd want is the boneless. I'll start with the boneless because I don't want to get wrecked on it, you know, right off the bat because it's got bones and skin. So I'll, I'll get some next time we're at the store and, uh, and give that a shot and see if, uh, see if I can get somebody to make me a salmon patty and <laughs> see how that tastes. Did you, uh, did you ever eat, um, salmon patty and try some, um, flaxseed? You ever use flaxseed in your salmon patty? It was delicious. Something about the flaxseed. I really like those. Um, but um next time i go to the store i'll get a can of that and i'll give it a shot but uh yeah can't eat the uh the anchovies anymore you haven't tried flaxseed yeah i don't know if you'd like it or not i liked it it's kind of like just it, they're they're so small you know they're almost but i think they give it some kind of a little extra flavor or Maybe it was just biting the seed, you know, the little bitty seed. There's probably as small as a strawberry seed. They were like very little. Um, but uh, dip my salmon patties in mustard when I eat them. Huh. I'll tell you what, I really love mustard. And uh, I eat a lot of mustard. Um, mustard greens, too. I love mustard greens. I don't know if you've ever had mustard greens. We were uh, fishing one time by a lake, and um, there was an older guy there. You think flaxseed is good for you? I've just never bought them. Yeah. Yeah. We was eating it quite often there for a while. Um, but there was these big, tall plants growing next to this lake that we were fishing at, and this guy told us, said, hey, uh, all that over there is uh, mustard greens. If you guys like mustard greens, you know, there's plenty of it over there. You can pick a big bag of it. So I looked it up and yeah, it was mustard greens. So we picked a garbage sack full of them, like a, one of the 55 gallon garbage sacks, took it home and blanched it. And, and you could take a 55 gallon sack full of, of mustard greens and blanch them. So you love all your greens. Yeah, you're from the South. <laughs> and it doesn't make that much. Like, it was like, wow. All those mustard greens only made that pot of, of greens. It's like, man, I couldn't believe it. it they, they blanched down like to nothing. <laughs> oh, you used to live in the South. So you love all your greens. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I'm not from the South. But I still love greens, man. I, I can I can sit down for dinner and just eat a can of spinach. You know, I I love that stuff. Like growing peas, all that work for a bowl of dang peas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Garden period, man, is is a lot of work. It's like a neighbor of mine down the street. He's, uh, well, I've got a video on him. Leroy is his name. Uh, we did a, a little video out here in the yard called Campfire Chat with Leroy about aliens. And he says every year people start out with a garden and man, they look awesome, you know, at the beginning of the year. 
and then as it gets hotter and hotter the gardens look worse and worse and then right smack dab in the middle of winter uh, summertime when it's really hot outside everybody's garden looks like crap weeds are growed up to your waist and that's it they're done you know um because it gets hot you can't handle that heat and then weeds never stop so i'm going to space my rows far enough apart where i've got a little compact tractor and i think i'm going to space them far enough apart where i can run that little compact tractor through there and tear all the weeds out and you guys are probably tired of looking at that um tear all the weeds out of it and clean it up a little bit oh have you guys seen these i know you have a lot of you it's a little gold nugget in there it's called a grain it's a grain of gold oh that was pretty cool and it's on a bitcoin card i think i got this from uh, steve looking for silver but anyway um i'm going to try to make my garden as easy as possible to maintain um i love to garden make the room to move in <laughs> yeah well hey we can always use extra help down here gardening so come on always need help you can't get enough people to help you in the garden you know it, it takes it takes more than one or two people if you got a big garden um okra we grew okra one year and um i finally made a deal with my neighbor leroy he would cut the okra one day and i would cut the okra the next day so because it was every day the okra was had to be cut and if you missed it a day or two the okra was too big and then they would get tough and they're run you know so you kind of lose them so you have to have somebody like you know on the off day you cut one day somebody else cuts one day or you know two or three days whatever you got to be able to move around in it yeah Oh, I see what you say. Make 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 room to move in. Okay. I thought you were saying you were wanting to move in because I had a garden. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, you got to have room around them. And I, I did that one time. I planted everything way too close together. And it was a it was terrible. Um, like shoulder width apart. I had corn, okra. What did we have? Sunflower seed plants or sunflower seeds. LOL, sorry. No, no worries. It's all good. We're just having fun. Um, oh, and I grew tobacco that year too. And I don't know if you've ever, anybody's ever grown tobacco out there. Um, tobacco plants get huge and the leaves on them are just, I mean, like an elephant ear kind of leaf. They get humongous. They take up a lot of space and they get seven, eight feet tall. So they take up a lot of space. I had more tobacco leaves and I grew those for SHTF too, because I was going to grind them up. I did. I grind, ground up a lot of it and uh, like cured it in the barn. You let it dry out a little bit. You moisten it every once in a while with a, a little spray bottle, flip them over and hang them in the barn and kind of let them dry out. And then uh, you can grind it up. And uh, once it's all dry, you've got tobacco. And I think the longer it ages, the less harsh it is. I believe I got that correct because it's just the opposite of what you would think. It's usually pretty strong when you first harvest it. Yeah, it was good to smoke. I smoked a bunch of it, believe it or not. Um, I shredded it in a paper shredder. And... Uh, I went and bought those little tubes and I smoked quite a bit of it. Yep. Yeah, it, it, and it was good tobacco. It's crazy. Uh, I had, uh, I think two different kinds of tobacco. I can't remember what kinds it were now, but, um, I let it go to seed. A lot of it went to seed and Lord have mercy. I had enough tobacco seed and just a couple of plants to probably plant, uh, I don't know, 500 acres. Because they are the seeds are so small, they're just like they're little bitty seeds, and it's it's amazing how small the seed is and how big the plant gets. It's just crazy. But anyway, yeah, I probably had about I think I had about fifteen tobacco plants, and uh, I've never seen it sold anywhere. I'm in Nebraska now. 
Uh, you can order it online. Comes in a, it's crazy. It'll come in a little, a little package, just like your regular seeds. You know, the little uh, what four by six package. And depending on what kind it is, um, the price of it's kind of ridiculous. Like it might be four bucks for that little package. And when you open it, you have to be oh so careful because you won't have enough seed to cover a third of that gram of silver. Like you won't have enough seed to cover that. And there'll be, oh, maybe a hundred seed there. And they actually say, take a, what was it they said use? Um, a toothpick, maybe a wetted toothpick and you can touch them and put it in the dirt. And you don't really even have to cover it up. You just stick it on top. <laughs> you got to raise them inside. You start out, you know, out of the weather with just fluorescent lights to get them to germinate. And they're so little and they're so dainty in the beginning. They they are so fragile, like very hard in the first part, the first stages of them to get them going. But once you've got them going, then there's no stopping them. It's like Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> Um, you'd be amazed. And when you see what you paid four dollars for, you're gonna flip out. It's gonna be like, wow, that that's all I got for four bucks. But if you let one of them go to seed a little bit, uh, you'll have enough seed to plant a hundred acres easy out of one plant. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, check it out. Let me know. In fact, you know what? Uh, I should get some of those seed and bring them in. I'll have them in one of my videos. I'll I'll bring them in and show you what tobacco seeds look like i think i might even have a marked maybe on what kind they are my uncle uh, lives out in california and he wanted some tobacco seed and i sent him some and he and he he, he called me he's like man how come that's all you sent i was like dude that you, you don't have any idea that's enough tobacco seed to plant 100 acres and he was just going to grow a few in his backyard and he thought i was being stingy with him but and i guess it kind of was but there's no sense in just wasting them, you know what I mean? So, like I said, I've still got them, and they're probably still good. But uh, I'll bring them on, and I'll I'll make a video, and I'll show you guys. Whoever's interested in seeing them can check them out. It's it's crazy how little they are. You you, it, <laughs> they're definitely one of the smallest seeds I've ever seen. But anyway, hey Tracy, thank you for stopping by. And uh, thanks for the chat and everybody else has stopped by and said hi. And um, I just wanted to do this little review on the tamales and uh, and uh, to see if they're worth stocking up on. You know what I mean? And uh, you, cool, even though I need to quiet, easier said than done. <laughs> you bet you tracy thank you for stopping by i appreciate it and uh watch out for the next one I'll, I'll probably just do these reviews on a live stream so anyway thank you guys god bless yeah i know quit smoking huh <laughs> i got you uh it's on my list i appreciate you though thank you guys for stopping by dang phones calls but i'm back now oh sir gold Hey, I'm just fixing to wrap it up, buddy. We've been talking about uh, tobacco seeds and planting potatoes and all kinds of gardening and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, I'm going to jump off of here now and uh, I'll be doing some more reviews on some of this stuff and just, you know, putting it out there. Is it, is it worth putting in your pantry or not? You know, um, I think it's, I think it's okay. You know, we're going to have to eat something. So, and it's a supplement to whatever else we can find or grow or whatever. So, and we may have some bad times coming, guys. I mean, man, a lot of stuff's going stupid out there. Um, just the food situation and, and what's going on over, over Russia and Ukraine and everything and then in Canada and all that. So, you know what I mean? Stock up on a little bit of food, have some, have some available ants lol keep an eye out for an anthill all right guys god bless y'all have a good night